and welcome everyone to Rugged Outdoors Guide. My name is Pete and today I'm in a forest. It's kind of bleak. It's early spring in southern Ontario. I'm just outside of Niagara Falls, Ontario and this is like some crazy stuff that has happened here over the years like the War of 1812. It happened all around here. There's a whole bunch of like British and American people shooting each other and all that stuff. Okay, okay, back to business. We're here to talk about a hammock, as you can tell by the title. And guys, this is truly, truly the most unique product I've ever, well, pretty close, that I've ever reviewed. It's not just a hammock. You can get hammocks anywhere. You can see them on Amazon for like 15 bucks. Trust me, do you know that every hammock in the world, listen, listen, every hammock in the world that I have seen anyway, is meant for a banana shaped body. Banana body. Why would I want to sleep in that? In fact, I cannot sleep in a hammock. I've, I've lain down once in a hammock and how is anyone supposed to sleep in a banana sling. This hammock that I'm gonna talk about today is the first one of its kind that I've seen. Now there are a couple others that actually exist somewhere in the universe. You can see a few of them online, but they're very, very, very um, scarce. And they don't have the features that this one does. I recently met the guy who made the Helsden hammock. Guess what his name is? Helsden. Well, it's Dave, last name Helsden, excellent, excellent designer. I mean, he doesn't have any formal education doing uh, design of tents or hammocks or anything, but he did an excellent, excellent job. Kudos to him, wonderful, wonderful product. But is it all rainbows and unicorns for the Helsden hammock? <laughs> don't bet on it. Why don't we get into it right away? Let's take a look at what it's all about. All right, so I just mentioned that this hammock is not meant for banana-shaped bodies, right? It's meant for human-shaped bodies. And not only that, but it's meant for humans to sleep at every angle possible. To sleep on your back with your knees bent. How cool is that in a hammock? And having them supported while they're bent. And you can sleep on your side, which I do all the time. I can't sleep on my stomach or my back. I have to sleep on my side. I can do it in this thing. And there are tons of people, tons of testimonials from people who say they sleep on their stomach in this hammock. Come on, what hammock company can actually boast that? All right, now, if you look behind me, you can see that it looks like it's kind of ripped apart and destroyed because what I've done is I've peeled back the tent shell or the weather shell or whatever you want to call it. Um, it's the fly and the main body, tent body of it, so that you can see what's going on inside. So let's go take a look at the inside right now. All right, so now I'm going to get into it and you can kind of see what a human body looks like inside this thing. Alright, oh man, I got mud in here already. Oh, it's my beautiful new. Uh, Alright. <sighs> Alright, at this very moment, I feel like I'm lying kind of flat. I don't feel banana ish at all. I can feel a very slight bend in my knees, and there's no pressure at my shoulders. For those of you who know, uh, hammock camping, you'll know that there's some pressure. That's always the thing you're battling against, um, shoulder pressure. I really can't feel any. Maybe I'm just a wimp and don't have wide shoulders. I don't know. All right, so what about side sleeping? Okay, obviously you can't really tell what's going on, but I'm, I promise you I am being honest. I can sleep on my side. I, I can, my arm can go anywhere. I can go under me. <sighs> now, I don't know who's going to sleep on their stomach, but let me just try. <laughs> a 
Okay, whatever. If you're into sleeping on your stomach, I guess you can. I can't sleep on my stomach anyway, so I don't know. All right, let me get out of this thing. All right, so first of all, just a note about the straps. These straps are really long. I've discovered that you can put the hammock between two trees that are actually about twice the length of the hammock away from each other. So that's a good deal. Super strong straps. Now, inside here, what we've got is two spreader bars. There's the one near the feet, and over here is the one near the head. And they're just bars, like tent bars, that kind of come together. I'm trying to do this with one hand. See that? It just, they fit together and there's a kind of a support locking bar here and it clicks into place, all right? So that's the same on both ends. And so that's part of why it's, it's wide as it is at your shoulders, but that's not the main reason. This bar and the one at the feet, they're not actually making uh, this design work as it works. This design is meant to work because of the way that it is stitched and sewn and designed along the edges. Now, unfortunately, you can't really see unless you're here, but right around your midsection here, it becomes narrower and tighter. And so that doesn't allow you to sag way down like a regular banana hammock does. And then right near the feet, it, it kind of widens out and it kind of gives a little bit so that your, your, uh, on the other side of your knees, it can kind of go down a little bit and it goes up right around this point for your knees. Uh, very, very cool. The other thing is that it's got this area in front here. It's probably, I can, I can probably fit, that's uh, probably a bad analogy, but I can probably fit about five basketballs in here. All right. I know because I play basketball a lot. So that's, that was the first thing that came to mind uh, in terms of storage capacity. Um, not that you would put your 30 liter food barrel there, but it could fit quite nicely. And uh, if you want to be daring, I suppose you could do that and keep your bear spray handy, but you didn't hear that from me. All right. Don't leave me any nasty comments. And the same thing down here, there is a whole storage area um, by your feet. All right. So that is something unique that I don't know of any hammock that does, uh, that gives you storage inside of it. All right, guys, something else very cool that I've, I've got to mention here that you may or may not use, but I suggest you use it. And that is right here. You can see that the, the sleeping area of this hammock, the main part of it is double layered. And what that allows you to do is to slip a mattress under here. And um, I would suggest a relatively small one. Don't bring a big bulky one, but anything you have will insulate you. And even in the summertime, even, even when the weather is really warm during the daytime, I know from what little experience I have with hammock camping, I'm kind of a tent guy, um, that's gonna change. I know that, that you can get chilly on your, your back end, unless you've got a really, really good sleeping bag, but bring a mattress like you would with a tent, but make it fairly small. And we've got a lot of uh, mattresses that we've reviewed. There's one that would just work perfectly. So I'll put the link in the description below. And um, that is the one that I have packed up ready to go on my first actual trip with this hammock very soon. All right, so now that we've seen how this hammock looks kind of on the inside, because we've got the tent and fly pulled back, um, let's put that back on so that we can see what it looks like on a normal day-to-day -day basis, how, how you guys will use it. The only other thing I'll say is that if you look right here, you can see there are three actually straps that really hold the whole thing together. The, the tent, the fly, the um, bug screen, and all of the other nomenclature that you're going to need. All right, so let's go and put this thing together right now. All right, so what you're looking at here is actually one of two layers of tent material that goes over you when you're in the hammock. This is actually, Dave himself told me that this is what he calls an internal fly. And that's really kind of what it is because the 
the other piece that goes over top has some ventilation material which isn't going to keep the rain out. So where this is ventilated here where you see these holes, obviously that won't keep the rain out but that is covered with the other piece and then the ventilation panels are here. And so when rain does go through them, obviously it's hitting this and uh, it goes right around and away from you. So anyway, that's the first layer. All right, so the second layer, which is on now, goes on in about 30 seconds. So very, very easy. And as you can see, ventilation panel is here and underneath it is the, the rain fly, which will shed the water down and onto the ground. Okay, so just before I jump into this hammock again with my muddy shoes, um, we should probably just touch on some of the really big differences between this hammock and a regular banana hammock. Okay, a regular hammock has an awkward kind of curved sleeping posture. It has a high center of gravity and there's no support at all for your back and your knees. There's no storage no privacy and the bugs can potentially bite your butt because it's usually a pretty skimpy single layered bottom. Oh and the other thing is it has really bad rain protection compared to this. I mean have you seen what regular outdoors people do when they sleep in a hammock? They stick a fly over top of them. Now that's okay but it's a little bit more awkward, if not a lot more awkward, to find enough tree space to put this fly over you perfectly centered over your actual hammock. It's, it's a chore and I just refuse to do it. I don't have that much time or patience when I'm setting up my camp spot. And on top of that, a lot of these guys who sleep in these hammocks with a fly, they're concerned about rain, but they're doing nothing for the bugs. Some of them have a bug net, a lot of them don't. All right, so what makes a Helsden so much better? Well, it's kind of the opposite of some of the things I just said, right? It's got a lower center of gravity, which is way better for stability. The spreader bars make sure that the hammock sides are not crushed up against your shoulders. It's perfect for anyone who wants to sleep on their side, like I showed you, and even your stomach, believe it or not. It has privacy. We didn't even talk about that. I mean, that's just crazy. I don't want to be seen by anybody who walks by when I'm sleeping in my hammock. This also has really, really good rain protection, better than just hanging a tarp over your hammock and hoping that the wind won't blow the rain in sideways. And one of the biggest advantages is that you can store quite a bit of gear inside of it under your head and your legs. The other thing is that no other hammock has, I mean, I have never seen this, is storage underneath your butt, right down there. You never have to actually leave any stuff on the ground like you do with a lot of other hammocks. You gotta leave your boots on the ground and uh, who knows what else, maybe some electronics even. Here, all you do is slide it in the bug net which is serving two purposes. It, it, it prevents bugs from biting your butt if you don't have enough of you know layers there between your body and the, the bottom of the, the hammock but it also serves as a very, very large storage area. Granted, you're not gonna store like 50 pound items there, but anything from like a pair of shoes and an extra jacket, easily, easily stored under there. Keep everything, everything off the ground. All right, do you really need any more positive features here? Well, I'll give you one more. You can set the whole thing up in less than two minutes. Try that with a regular hammock and a full rain fly. All right, so you know where I am, right? I refuse to desecrate this anymore with my dirty feet. So there we go, socks only. Now, you'll notice the green tinge going on here, and that's because it is Eureka green. If you have a Eureka tent that's green, it'll be exactly this color. At least there is a color like this Eureka. To, I have one and it's identical to this. And that's because Eureka used to make this type of a tent in cooperation with Dave Helsden, but Dave is now on his own and I think he's always making improvements. And so I love, love this model, not from Eureka, but from Helsden Outdoors.
Guys, one of the really unique things here, I don't know if you, you know this or not, if you're into science, but if you take a look up here, this is just above my head here. Remember we talked about these two layers? This, this is the interior fly and this is the exterior, the outside. They're both waterproof, so you're covered from the elements. But because it's a double wall, what happens is condensation is severely reduced, if not eliminated. I talked to Dave about that, and that was one of his big kind of selling features. And uh, I haven't yet experienced that, but I know that I will. With one layer, you're looking at condensation if the weather is kind of chillier and you're doing a lot of normal breathing. Um, it doesn't happen so much with this tent because of the two layers. It's just the way it is. Hey, how's it going? <laughs> I like playing with my GoPro. All right, guys, before we wrap up here, I want to give you a bit of a feature list of what you're getting with the Helsden hammock. And one of the things that I didn't mention earlier is that these two layers that I keep talking about on the camper shell or the, the, the main tent body, they're both removable. You slide them down or you can slide each individual once. When you get rid of the interior fly, you've got the ventilation panels on either side and you can look outside or whatever. So it's pretty versatile. You can have no layers if you want. I probably never will. But then you can have one layer or the other, um, whatever suits your purpose, right? So very, very cool options. And it's really a versatile hammock. I mean, I hate to even call it a hammock. It's, it's like a tent. Better than any tent that I've ever slept in so far. It's got the interior fly, which is basically creating a double wall. So it decreases or eliminates condensation. It has removable tent or camper shell, which is the two layers that I've been talking about. It has 360 degree bug protection all around you. And it's got a mesh storage area under you so that you never have to put anything on the ground. It has super long and very tough and durable support straps. The interior fly that I keep talking to you about is actually kind of like a shield and it wraps around your whole body kind of like a cocoon and it can attach underneath you. So we're talking extreme protection from extreme conditions. It's got really unique construction features that allow for the bottom of the hammock itself to keep your body straight. It's not the spreader bars that are doing that. And it has double layer construction so that you can put a mattress under you for added comfort but also added insulation in the colder weather. Okay, so is everything perfect about the Helsden hammock? Well, unfortunately, the answer is no. Now, the hammock is meant for one person. I also have a Eureka Solitaire hiker's tent, and it has about the same amount of room. Doesn't really have a lot of storage inside. This one has a little bit more storage, but my Eureka is, you know, it's fairly decent. It's just a tent that sits on the ground and it's meant for one person, not a lot of extra room. That Eureka, with all of what comes with it, all of the, the pegs and the tent poles and the fly and all of that, weighs three pounds, two ounces. You know what this beast weighs? Six pounds and seven ounces. So it's like twice the size. And when you package it all up, it's about the size of a two person tent with the pegs and the poles and everything else. So while that's not ideal, I'm gonna put up with it because this offers me so much more than my Eureka. It offers extra storage and it offers the ability to camp anywhere where there's lousy ground for a tent. And there's trees just about everywhere I go all throughout the entire province of Ontario and beyond. So I kind of like what it gives me and I pack pretty light anyway. So this is kind of going to be my, I guess my indulgence. I'm going to add an extra three pounds to everywhere I go. But as I say, I'm not really struggling hard on my trips. Everything is so light that I could probably afford to have a little bit of extra. And if you're not super, super psycho concerned about weight, like I kind of am, then it's no big deal. Six pounds, eh, whatever. It gives you lots of comfort. It gives you lots of versatility. You've never slept in anything like this. I can pretty much guarantee you. It's not at all like a regular hammock and I guarantee you I will never set my butt 
on a regular hammock ever, ever again. Hey, if you appreciate reviews like this on products that you can potentially use in your outdoorsmanship, and uh, if you would like me to continue to do reviews like this, as well as trip documentaries and other like DIY projects, love doing all that, please do give me a like and a subscribe. That does not cost you a single penny. And apparently YouTube's algorithms really like it when you guys like what I do. And in fact, they love it when you binge on my videos. So go ahead and uh, in about a few seconds, you'll see some videos pop up and um, uh, that YouTube thinks you'll wanna watch. So go ahead and watch them, all right? Thanks again for watching guys. And please, until the next time you see me get out there, enjoy God's creation and always keep on looking up.